Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with the six-pack. We have made it, kind of, we have made it to the first preview of meaningful football games. It's the Scotty Six-Pack Podcast. We are talking Wisconsin Badgers, Western Michigan. Let's go. I am your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. While you are here, smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Smash that like button, because I know, I know, I know you like that we are talking meaningful football. It is still August. We're talking meaningful football. We're talking meaningful college football. College football is here. That week zero nonsense is gone. We're talking previewing a Wisconsin Badgers football game. And I know if you're listening to this today, it means that you still have to wait like 36 hours until the game starts because we're dropping this a day early to make sure that you all get time to listen to the preview episode. We're going to have a bigger season preview episode tomorrow, kind of, kind of taking a, a more macro level view of the Wisconsin Badgers football season, predicting kind of game by game, telling you who I think the MVPs of the team are going to be. But let's dig into the nitty gritty here. Let's, let's dig into the nitty freaking gritty. Get that? That's, that's a Madison pun. <laughs> About... Western Michigan and what the Wisconsin Badgers need to do to win and start the season one and oh playing a game on freaking Friday night, by the way. Absurd. Absurd playing game on Friday night. That's why I, I am I am I'm not around. I, I am protesting, protesting college football on Fridays, leaving the country, getting as far away from it as I possibly can. But college football is back. And let's talk about it. Let's talk about Western Michigan. Uh, this is not a good Western Michigan <laughs> team. That's a lot of lead in. That's a two and a half minute lead in uh, to, to come in hot with. This is not a good football team. Not a good football team, but Wisconsin struggled against not a good football team in week one last year. So they could struggle again. They really could, and I don't know. They might. I don't think that the Badgers will, but they might. Uh, this is not a good Western Michigan team. They they are sub 100 in, in SP+, plus, Bill Connolly's SP+, plus rankings, uh, the predictive metrics for college football teams. Think about it. If you are a college basketball fan, think about it. If you're Ken Palm, you're Bart Torvik of, of college football teams, SP+. Plus. This Western Michigan team is better than the Buffalo team also from the Mac mid American conference that Wisconsin played in week one of last season. This Western Michigan team should be better than that Buffalo team was, but let's remember that Wisconsin led that Buffalo team only 14 to 10 at halftime before Wisconsin ultimately pulled away in the second half to win by three touchdowns. Thanks to some, you know, long runs by Brian Allen and Chesma Lucy in there. But, that was a close game for a little while. So it's not to say that Wisconsin can't manage a way, manage to find a way to keep this one close. Um, regardless, there, there should be no excuses for a first half performance. Like we saw a season ago from Wisconsin. They should come in knowing and understanding that uh, they, they need to take this game seriously, particularly given that this is the second year of a new regime. Um, where I think Western Michigan might give Wisconsin some trouble, however, is that I do have question marks about Wisconsin's defense against the Western Michigan offense. As we have chronicled the last week of the show, I have some concerns about the Wisconsin Badgers defensive line. <laughs> if you are a regular, regular, regular ugh, listener to the show, this should not come as a surprise. There is not a lot of high-level talent on the defensive line, particularly at nose guard to plug the run. Ben Barton is serviceable, but he's not much more than that. He's probably enough for this game, but sometimes stuff happens. Sometimes a group of five team 
pops up and gets you with a big performance. Ben Barton, plug in the middle of the field, maybe good enough, maybe not. Plus, your only proven talent on the defensive end is Kurt Neal. Maybe it's Daryl Peterson. If he is really going to start on defensive line for this game instead of outside linebacker, we will find out. And that concerns me because Western Michigan can run the ball a little bit. They, they, they absolutely can. Jalen Buckley, who is coming in as a redshirt sophomore th this, this year, he is five foot 11, 210 pounds, a little bit of a, a little bit of a big bowling ball there. You know, wish he had a little bit more weight to really call him a bowling ball, but well built, well built young man. He was the Mac freshman of the year last year in Western Michigan's conference. He was a freshman, all American, according to the athletic and football writers of America association. Well, FWA, whatever the acronym is. God, we're firing all cylinders. Um, he rushed for over a thousand yards on 5.3 yards per carry a season ago. J Jalen, Jalen Buckley did. And he's on the Doak Walker award watch list for the best running back in the country this year. That's pretty good. That's a good test for your defensive line up front right away. Um, particularly given that he, he is not going to be running behind a bunch of schmucks. Jalen Buckley isn't this Western Michigan off or offensive line is actually pretty decent. You have two linemen who were named to the East West Shrine Bowl. Uh, watch list in Jacob Gideon, redshirt senior at center, who I believe is first team um, all Mac for the last two seasons at center. You also have Addison West, a redshirt senior at guard, who again, also named to the watch list for the East West Shrine Bowl. So you help that even you, you hope, sorry, that even if the defensive line is a little bit rough, you get some help from your linebackers or Jake Cheney is an inside linebacker, your Daryl Peterson coming over to help from outside linebacker to uh, helping at defensive end. Uh, John Pius steps up the FCS transfer from William and Mary and, and more who are going to be called in to plug holes. What, what if we see more of these three inside linebacker alignments that we saw in camp? I don't know. We'll find out. But again, this isn't the best Mac team. Maybe, maybe they can use the run to set up some play action and, and hurt you a little bit. I Wisconsin's secondary should be talented enough with two guys who are, you know, all Americans, all, all American level talents in Hunter Wooler at safety and Ricardo Holman at cornerback. The secondary should be good enough to handle whatever Western Michigan wants to throw at it. Let's let's say Western Michigan really establishes the run. And then get the play action game going. Well, what does that look like for Western Michigan? They do have Kenneth Womack, who led the Mac in receptions a season ago. He's also on the East West Rhine Bowl watch list. He led the Mac in receptions, but only had 691 yards. I know, as like a Badgers fan, you could be like, oh, 691 yards. That's a pretty good year <laughs> for your top receiver. Uh, 691 yards and one touchdown, but Western Michigan kind of rotated through some quarterbacks, had a little bit of a rough time figuring out who that was going to be based on play. Uh, they struggled to get the ball over to their talents like Kenneth Womack, but maybe now they have their full starting quarterback in Hayden Wolf and, and they like him a little bit more that that could help the passing game. So I, I think there are reasons to think that Western Michigan could get its offense chugging along against the Badgers, right? And that, that could present some challenges to, to Wisconsin. I, I could see it. On, on the other side of the ball, which is where I think Wisconsin should be able to pull away in, in this game, regardless of what shenanigans are happening with the defense, which ultimately I think they should be able to figure it out. You should have a big enough talent advantage to to handle it. You, you have enough returning production as a whole defensive unit, regardless of the questions on the defensive line, you should be able to figure it out. If they can't, they're going to get pushed around by everybody this season, and it's not going to be fun. Uh, but Western Michigan's defense shouldn't be able to hang with Wisconsin offense. I, I really, really, really don't think so. This was a team that was bad against both the run and the pass a season ago. And after a season in which it was bad against both the run and the pass, 
They lost a second round NFL draft pick from this unit last year on the defensive line. Uh, defensive end Marshawn Nealand, who was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. So you're telling me a MAC team with a suspect defense couldn't stop the run, couldn't generate a pass rush. Pass rush. I keep I keep sounding like I have this terrible lisp. I think I'm just tired. They also lose a second round draft pick. And we are supposed to expect Western Michigan to bounce back from that. Now, people people telling you that Western Michigan can bounce back from that. People who might want to tell you. I don't, I don't know where, who these people are, where to find them. I would, I would love to talk to them. Um, but anyone <laughs> who wants to hawk for Western Michigan and tell you that they can win this game, their argument likely relies on the fact that some of these replacements for Marshawn Nealand on the defensive line are former power conference players. Western Michigan is bringing in a, a few different players who used to be power conference players to, to replace Marshawn Nealand on the defensive line. You're bringing in Ontario Thompson, who's transferring in from Iowa, a, a former special teamer for the Hawkeyes and a former uh, junior college guy. You're also bringing in Popeye Williams, former Louisville transfer, former four-star recruit out of high school, uh, but he only got into a few games of action. You also have Rodney McGraw, also a transfer on the Louisville D-line. Played a total of three snaps at Louisville. Before he played a season at Louisville, he spent a couple seasons at Penn State. The argument that you hear from people who say that their group of five team their, their non-power conference team is going to be better this year, a lot of times comes with the reasoning that their team added some transfers from a higher level of football, right? That they added a, a former power conference player to their favorite non-power conference team. I think that's backwards analysis. I think that's really poor analysis, quite frankly. You 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 might think that these down transfers, right? Transferring down from power conference football to group of five football. You might think that those down transfers would hit at a higher rate in conferences like the MAC. But we have no evidence to suggest that is the case. And Intuitively, to me, we might actually want to consider that the opposite is true. That these down transfers actually hit at a lower rate than some typical high school prospects. Because we're generally pretty good at, at projecting players out of high school. But for these players that we are not, right, your, your four-star talents, your, your Popeye Williams is Popeye's Williams. We're going to go Popeye's Williams. Um, <laughs> transferring down to Western Michigan, we got them wrong. They're they're not transferring to Western Michigan as a four star recruit anymore. It's not what they are. They are now someone who <laughs> was a four star recruit and is going to go play at a not very good MAC program. So there was a miss there in the evaluation. So intuitively, these down transfers really shouldn't hit at a higher rate, maybe should hit at a lower rate than, than high school recruits that we talk about, right? Former Juco guy turned special teamer for, for Iowa, a special special teamer for Iowa, a guy who is out there blo blocking punts in Anterio Thompson, right? He, he might actually be a little bit of a wrecking ball for, for uh, Western Michigan, but it, if the argument for Western Michigan is, yeah, we're going to replace a second round NFL draft pick with three guys from, from Iowa and Louisville. I am pretty skeptical of that argument. Um, Ultimately, I think Wisconsin should be able to push around Western Michigan on offense. I think Wisconsin's offensive line is better. They're not going to be banged up at the beginning of the season. Western Michigan had one real solid player on the defensive line a year ago, and he has gone playing in the National Football League. 
I think we could see a game script play out if Wisconsin wants to just go in and win the football game that it could push around Western Michigan's defensive line and just run the ball, tote the rock. I do think, however, that Wisconsin should not take that approach. Wisconsin should try to take advantage of the opportunity for reps in the passing game, particularly if you think your offensive line is now becoming built more appropriately to pass block on a down-to-down basis. Get some reps against a defensive line that is not your own guys, but a defensive line that you you have to give full effort against, but isn't really liable to go out and kill your starting quarterback. Answer these questions. Answer the questions that that we talked about on Tuesday that I have, uh, or Monday, on Monday, that I have about this football team. Go out there and... and Answer the questions we have about Tyler Van Dyke. What what is he going to look like early on? Get some tight ends involved. Let's find out who Tyler Van Dyke has chemistry with in the receiving core. Are they going to be able to build that with Will Pauling, with Bryson Green, with Tretch Kekahuna? Is that is that going to happen? Let's let's find out who has that rapport with the quarterback. Let's have the Wisconsin batter show us what this offense is going to look like throughout the season. Is it, is it going to start firing on all cylinders right away? Or is it going to require fits and starts like we saw throughout last season? Is Are, are we going to get a repeat of the Buffalo game where they, they there was failure to launch, much like the spring game? Um, on defense, I, I think aside from the goal of winning the game, aside from maybe trying to win it through the pass instead of what I think is the easier route of trying to win it through the run. Uh, I, I want to see a few things, a few goals for this game. Uh, on defense, survive. S- survive on the defensive line. Show that you are not a unit that's going to get run over by a program like Western Michigan, despite the fact that they have some decent pieces on the offensive line, despite the fact that Jalen Buckley is a good running back. Show that this defensive line is actually made up of Big Ten caliber talent. Second, don't let the offensive line get banged up. Rotate guys in and out. Let other folks get reps after you know the first half when hopefully you're up by a couple of touchdowns and, and you do not feel particularly worried about injuring your starting quarterback. Let's let's go. And, and third, your, your secondary should be able to help you from stuff really hitting the fan. If there are problems containing the run on the defensive line, if the inside linebackers aren't what I think that they are, your secondary should be able to get you out of a jam in this one. But if that's what it requires, it's not going to be a good time. However, I, I think that Wisconsin should be able to win this game one way or another. I think Wisconsin figures out a way to win this game because I think they have a couple of different paths to doing so. Unless they just absolutely for whatever reason cannot stop the run but i think we know that hunter wooler is talented enough <laughs> single-handedly right to to come up play in the box and shut something down eventually i know it's a total team game you got to play with 11 guys in the field but i i think eventually somebody on wisconsin's roster will, will shut down uh that that run game some way somehow and help them win unless tyler van dyke goes and turns the ball over a few times uh, in which case, yeah, there's there's bigger problems on the Wisconsin batter's hands. Uh, but that is my preview for Western Michigan against the Wisconsin Badgers. It is time for college football. Can you feel it in the air? Is it? We, we don't got the crisp air yet. It's the August games. We don't really have the crisp air. Maybe you get it in the nighttime at Camp Randall for the evening kickoff. Freaking Friday. Um, <laughs> um, 
I hope that you are enjoying your week. I hope I am enjoying my week. Um, let me know down in the comments. What are you most excited about for this football season? Are you nervous at all about the Wisconsin Badgers playing Western Michigan? Or do you think the Badgers handle Western Michigan handedly? Mm. Let me know down in the comments whether you're watching on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Scotty Sixpack or on your podcast platform of choice. Leave a review. Let me know what you think of the show. Five stars, kind comments. It really does help the show grow. And we're seeing a lot of growth over the last couple of weeks here. Just want to let you know that I really appreciate it. It really helps. Tell a friend, tell a friend. I've been your host, Kendrick Summers. I cover the Wisconsin Badgers for Athlon Sports. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Sixpack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. We'll be back with you one more time, one more sleep before the college football season gets underway for the Wisconsin Badgers tomorrow. And tomorrow morning, we're going to break down my full season preview, what I think the big storylines for the season are going to be, where I think the Wisconsin Badgers end up record wise, and whether or not we should be disappointed by it. We're going to break that down tomorrow morning on Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Until we talk to you then on Wisconsin.